When I was 16, I went on holiday to Barcelona, and it seemed the best and coolest way to get around there was on a scooter. More specifically, an old Vespa. So being an impressionable teenager, as soon as I got back home to England, I started looking for one. And after about one week of research, which at the time seemed more than enough, I bought the first one I saw in person, proceeded to strip it down with my dad, replaced the exhaust and shock, and began priming it for paint. And that's where the restoration ended. For the next decade, it sat in a garage and then was transported out to France where it was put in the back of a barn and forgotten about. Until now. This summer, I dug it out, cleaned it up, squeezed it into the boot of a Fiat Panda, and once again transported it across France, this time back to the UK and into central London. But first, thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. This is you on your computer or phone, and this is the website you want to visit. To do so, you have to send some of your information to them, including your location and the device you're using. But that website can now use this personal information to build a profile of you, which they can then sell on to third parties. It doesn't end there though, your internet service provider and any malicious individuals in the system now know exactly what you're looking at, where you are, and when. This could all be happening without you knowing a thing. So this is where NordVPN comes in. Instead, your connection goes through them, who then access these websites for you, hiding your personal information from being collected. Think of it like an invisibility cloak that lets you see the internet without it seeing you. But that's just the boring stuff. NordVPN enables you to access the internet from 60 different countries, which is really useful for finding cheaper deals. This is the exact same flight from Toulouse to Chicago, but it's 20 euros cheaper if you use a French VPN. And this is a UK streaming service that I've paid for but can't use when I'm in France, unless I use Nord. It's super quick to set up on Mac, iPhone, Windows and Android, and it's genuinely something I've been using on a daily basis for two years. They're currently running a holiday season deal, so please click the link down below and use the code CarlRogers if you want to get a two-year plan plus one free month with a massive discount. Thanks to Nord for sponsoring this video. So this is a 1987 Vespa PK50 XL, which means that it's a 50cc engine, and that's because the only engine that you're legally allowed to ride at that age. Not that I'd know much about riding it, of course. This first video is just gonna be me trying to assemble everything, hopefully get the scooter running. Then I'll know what's missing and I won't have to worry about damaging any nice new paint jobs. Starting from the front, that's the lamp. I love lamp. High beam, low beam, and then that's the horn. And then there's another switch, left and right, for the indicators. And obviously the, the speedo, low fuel, and the indicators. So that's where the key goes in. This is the housing unit for the light, which goes in the front plugs into there, so that's the left indicator, and this is the right indicator, and then the horn. So that's the front of the bike, oh, and then that's the rear brake. So when you pull on this, it sets the light off at the back. This is sort of the middle of the bike. This is where all the power comes in from the from the engine because there's no battery on this. So all the, these electrics are run directly from the engine. I don't know what this is. Mystery number one, coming back to the back of the bike. And this is obviously the main lights at the back. And then these are the left and the right indicators. One of them has lost all its connections. And I don't actually have the housing units. I should have two more of these for the back. We've lost them, basically, so I need to get two more of them. This fixes to the petrol tank. There's a little float in here. And again, it's broken at some point. It's been badly fixed. I believe this is a flasher. It turns the lights of the indicators on and off, on and off, on and off. Um, and then this, I think it's called a regulator, but I don't know what it does, and that's the earth. So that's the tank, nothing wrong with that. Some sort of lock. I've got a carburetor. That uh, is the, goes between the carburetor and the engine. The head assembly, front mud guard, and then onto the engine. But before we look at the engine, I'm gonna try and find a pallet because I brought back this with me, which is a homemade engine stand. And being central London, I'm sure there's gonna be something somewhere. So that's the first job. And this carburetor, we definitely had a part, and 
put new gaskets and seals on that as well. The last time we had this running, it was running fine without the air filter, but as soon as you put it on, the engine would just die. So I think there's a bit of a problem there somewhere. That's where the power goes into the electrical system. And then this other lead sends a spark to the spark plug or sends a current to the spark plug. That goes on there. And then this unit has broken off at some point. Um, and I've got a new one already. If we can get the engine running, then we can test the new unit. I've also got a bunch of new tools that I think I'll probably be needing. A bunch of pliers, some screwdrivers, mole grips. I've got a socket set. And some spanners. A huge selection of spanners, which means there's no excuse now for not being able to get something off. We might as well test it to see if we can get a spark first. I think it was only in there to stop stuff getting into the engine. Oh. So all we need now is some petrol. And to mix it with 2% scooter oil. take this off because it never starts with the air filter on. So I couldn't get it started last night, but I didn't have the essential ingredient, some sort of easy start spray. Okay, so we know it works now. I haven't tried it with the air filter on, but first I'm gonna try uh, with the new, this thing, and see if I get a spark. In red. just leave the engine for now and start assembling the frame. Actually first I'm gonna plug in the electrics. So this plugs into the engine. I'm 
going to assume that most of the electrics are working and I'm going to work on putting the frame back together with the engine to see if we can actually ride it. So these are all the cables that go in the frame. So this is obviously ripped off and it's just probably another one exactly like that. So I will need to replace it, but for the time being, it's absolutely fine. So I'm gonna take the shock off the engine and put it on the frame, because apparently it's easier. So I've tried fitting these gear selector cables, but because they're so torn up at the ends, I can't get them through these eyelets. So I'm gonna have to get new cables. These are all the new bits that I've ordered. I've got almost a complete cable set, a bunch of these nipples that you attach onto them. They're covers for the front brake, a new tube for the fuel line, new spark plugs, two springs for the stand, this, all these small things are for the rear brake assembly. This is a new choke cable, then new bearings for the front steering column, and then, I'm not sure what that is, I think that's to do with the throttle. And of course, a new stand. I'll leave that until it's all painted. Two new rear indicator lights, but they're definitely the wrong ones, because this is the original rear indicator cover. I don't have the housing, you can see, they're nothing like each other. So this is gonna to have to go back.
That's broken. Got no idea what they were using as grease, but. So that's the old bearing. Missing loads. Super rusty. Shit. And that is the new one. The next 48 hours were incredibly frustrating trying to decipher how to get these cables attached, which was partially solved after finding a long lost bracket in this box of random bolts and nuts, struggling to get any sort of tension on the cables until I got a hold of this brilliant little tool called a third hand, using my good old Audi drill to fabricate some homemade fixings, replacing half of the new cables back with the originals as they were too long. But finally, I had something that half resembled a Vespa, and after a decade of sitting in bits and pieces, it was time to see if she'd run.
So I now have a long list of parts that I need to order and I'm hoping in the next few months I'll be able to do a full respray, then put everything back together permanently and finally have the beautiful vintage Vespa my 16 year old self dreamed of. So thanks for watching and just to reiterate, although I'm sure you're fully aware by now, I am mechanically illiterate, so please go easy on me in the comments.